Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting tablet from Huawei. This is known as the Huawei MediaPad M6 Turbo. And this is definitely geared towards gaming. It actually puts out some really good performance. And one of the big reasons I picked this up was for emulation and on-the-go Android gaming in a smaller form factor than the Tab S6 or the Tab S7. But before we really get into it, if you don't mind that style of form factor, the big 10-inch to 11-inch screen, Definitely go with the Tab S6 or the Tab S7. It will outperform this. But if you're looking for something in between your phone and a larger tablet, I think this would be an awesome choice. But there's one caveat. These are a bit expensive unless you pick them up used or refurbished, and that's exactly what I did. Now, these usually go for around $450, but I was able to scoop this up refurbished on eBay for $235, so I figured I'd go ahead and jump all over it. And since then, I've seen a few other listings bidding out on these units. Now they come in two color variants. You can get the red, which I have here. I actually didn't have the choice or the blue. And when it comes to these Huawei devices in 2021, they don't come with Google Play pre-installed. So you will have to kind of sideload it or find a method to get Google Play up and running if that's what you want. Or you could just always rely on third-party app stores. But with this one here, it was actually pretty easy to get Google Play up and running. But when it comes down to it, I personally wouldn't even need it because I'm just going to be using this for native Android gaming, cloud streaming, and emulation. And that's really why I picked this up. So as for the specs on the MediaPad M6 Turbo, they actually look pretty good if you can pick this up at a decent deal. For the CPU, we have the Kirin 980. It's an 8-core CPU. We have 2 cores running at 2.6 GHz, 2 running at 1.92, and 4 running at 1.8. Those are the A55 cores. The GPU is the Mali G76 MP10, so we have that 10-core GPU, 6 GB of LPDDR4X RAM, an 8.4-inch IPS 2560 by 1600 display, 128 gigabytes of internal storage plus a micro SD card, and I've tested up to a 128 card in here, but I'm sure we could go higher. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0. It's got a 6100 milliamp hour battery. It's running Android 10 with a MUI UI 10, otherwise known as Emotion UI from Huawei. As for the overall usability of the tablet, I mean, this thing has been super quick. I haven't had any hangups or anything like that. Love the sound on this thing. It's got those dual stereo speakers tuned by Harman Kardon, and it does sound really good. And I think the main draw to a tablet like this for me is the form factor. I'm personally a big fan of these 8-inch tablets, even the 7-inch tablets for portability. And when it comes down to it, I have tablets that will outpace this. The Galaxy Tab S6 and the Galaxy Tab S7 are more powerful than this. But with those, we have a 10.1-inch and an 11-inch screen. And they're huge. I mean, they're really big tablets. And as you can see here with this 8.4 inch screen, it fits these telescopic controllers really well. So the first thing I always like to do when I'm testing out these Android devices is run some benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 689 and multi of 2461. Next up, we have 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. This test out OpenGL performance from that GPU. Total score, 4,497. Using the same benchmark here, but their new Vulcan test, 2,479. And finally, Antutu, coming in with a pretty impressive score of 386,137. Moving over to some native Android gaming. First up, we have Asphalt 9, and I do have this set to the maximum in the settings for this game. Everything's running great every once in a while when there's a lot of effects on screen. I do notice a stutter here and there, but I've only really noticed it with this game, and I've tested a bunch of games on here. Next up, we have Call of Duty Mobile. It is perfectly playable on this device. I do have the FPS and the settings set to extreme and the graphics set to high. Haven't noticed any issues at all. I mean, it looks great and it plays just fine. And the same thing goes for PUBG and all of the other games that I tested on this device. As long as you can get the game to install, this tablet's definitely going to handle it. I mean, we have plenty of power from that GPU and CPU in this thing. Now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos. We have some emulation. First up, Dreamcast using the Redream emulator upscaled to 1920 by 1440. I don't have any frame skip on. 
And as you can see, we're running at full speed. I do have the FPS up in the top left hand corner. I got a couple more Dreamcast games to test and then we'll move over to Sega Saturn. But the way it's looking right now, as long as the game is compatible with the Redream emulator, you're going to be able to run it at full speed, even upscaled pretty high. As you can see, we're at 1920 by 1440 with these. Here we have some Sega Saturn using RetroArch with the Yoba Sanchiro core, and overall performance is pretty great here. I do have the FPS up in the top right hand corner, every once in a while you'll see it dip down to around 58, but it's still very very playable. But there is one little issue that I've run into with this emulator specifically, and that's an audio stutter, and even on lower end chipsets I haven't run into this, so it could be a compatibility issue with this GPU. And by the way, I didn't bother going over to the standalone version of Yoba Sanchiro because we were hitting 60 with these games here. Next on the list, PSP using PPSSPP. First up, we have Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, 3X resolution, no frame skip, no hacks, and I'm using the Vulcan back end. And I've noticed that with this tablet, you're way better off using Vulcan with PSP because I was getting kind of half performance with OpenGL. But when I swapped over to Vulcan, even the harder to run games like Midnight Club and Chains of Olympus ran at full speed, 3X, no frame skip, no hacks. So yeah, this can definitely handle PSP emulation quite well. And finally, at least for this video, we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. Now I was pretty surprised that we were able to run some of these games at full speed. This one here I consider a mid-range game, which is Soul Calibur 2. As you can see, it's very playable, and I haven't seen it go under 56 FPS most of the time, it is sitting at 60. And I'm using the OpenGL back in. When I swapped over to Vulkan, I wasn't getting this kind of performance, so OpenGL is definitely where it's at with this here. But this doesn't mean that every GameCube game is going to be playable. Now there's a ton that will run at full speed on this. You do Wind Waker. Next up I have Sunshine, which ran really well. It's a game that runs at a native 30 FPS on original GameCube hardware, and we're getting 30 FPS on this tablet. But when it comes to the harder to run games like Metroid, F-Zero GX, and even Automotalista, this tablet just isn't going to be able to push those games at full speed. I was really hoping that I could mess around with the settings and get it to run properly, but unfortunately I just didn't have good luck with those heavier duty games. But overall I'm still impressed by this little tablet being able to play some of these games at full speed, and I want to give you an example of a harder one to run and what this thing does. I've tested out Vulcan and OpenGL with Automotalista. This is one of the harder ones to emulate, especially on an ARM device. Even the Snapdragon 855 does have trouble with this one here. I get around 55 FPS out of my Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. And with this one, we're only at about half speed, so 30 FPS. 
So overall, the Huawei MediaPad M6 Turbo is definitely a powerful little tablet, even out of its size class. Even when you compare this to most of the 10-inch tablets on the market, this definitely outpaces them in performance. And when you put this in its own size class, this is probably the most powerful 8.4 inch tablet on the market right now. But it's really hard for me to recommend this in 2021 when you look at it as a new device for around $450, that's what I've seen on eBay. If you can pick one of these up used for 250 or under, I think it would be well worth it. But if you're not looking for this specific form factor, I would definitely go with a used Galaxy Tab S6. You can pick those up for around $335 to $350 on eBay all day. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Huawei MediaPad M6 Turbo, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.